Alright, so welcome back to the channel guys. It is me, AD744. So today guys, we predicted with you guys the Champions League, Europa League, and Conference League group games. So we have a lot of games to go through guys, so sit tight and enjoy. And yeah, let me, like I said guys, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, man, if you're new on here. And I want to see us reach 20 likes this video guys, 20 likes this video. And um, like I said guys, remember guys, this um, Wednesday we're going to have a UCL review stream. And unfortunately, Thursday, I'm not going to have my Conference League Europa League stream simply because I'm obviously going to have an event that time. So what I'll end up doing is when I get back home from the event, I will just do a recorded video for you guys to go over match day five of Europa League and Conference League as a way to make up to you guys. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the Champions League first. So I'm going to keep this around like 15 minutes and then we'll go through the speed through the other two, like maybe like five-ish minutes. Here. So we have Shakhtar versus uh, Shakhtar Donetsk versus Royal Antwerp. For me, man, I'm going to have to go with Shakhtar to win this one. Royal Antwerp for me, I like this team. This team actually is decent going forward. It's just that defensively, they're very, very bad. And Shakhtar, ooh, they're actually decent at home. As we saw against Barcelona, they put up a great display at home against Barca. And I just feel like Shakhtar is going to get the job done. I don't think so. that will be as thrilling as the last encounter. I feel like this will be a lot more pragmatic, conservative. However, that being said, I still feel like Shakhtar is going to win this one. Although, as a Barca fan, I kind of want this one to end in a draw. So, you know, to obviously uh, make sure that we can qualify through. But um, realistically, though, I do th feel like Shakhtar is going to win this one 2-1. Next up, it is Lazio versus Celtic. Uh, Lazio versus Celtic, man. This is going to be an interesting game. Um, I'm kind of, Lazio honestly should be winning this game. With all due respect to Celtic, Celtic are not that great. And Celtic have been good on the Champions League this season. It's just that they haven't been great on the road. Lazio have been amazing, though, at home. And I just feel like, for me, Celtic haven't been great. So I'm going to go Lazio to win this one. I'm going to say another 2-1 win um, for, um, sorry, Lazio. All right. Now, next up is Barca Porto. Now, I'm going to give my preview. I'm not going to give a prediction because I'm I'm thinking about maybe doing a special video with my friend, a good friend of mine's name, Matt's Attack 9. I might do a preview with him. Uh, maybe tomorrow we might do a preview uh, for that game. Uh, maybe do a quick 10-minute, 15-minute preview maybe. Um, so in that game, I'll give a prediction there. This one, though, I'm not going to pred give a um, prediction. I will tell you, though, about this game. I'm not confident as a Barca fan. I'm not confident whatsoever. Barca have been very shaky recently, and I'm hoping that we can get a win. Because if we get a win, we are officially through to round 16. So we'll see what the tables bring for that game. Of course, check out that video. Uh, what I do with Mats um, in the uh, and probably sometime tomorrow. We have Young Boys versus Royal Ant uh, Young Boys versus Cervena Zvezda. This could be a very interesting one, guys. I'm gonna go for another draw. I feel like both these teams are around the same level, and I just don't really see much being separated. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, the next up is Man City versus RB Leipzig. Man City should be winning against RB Leipzig. Man City have way too much quality against RB Leipzig, and I just don't think RB Leipzig. Have what it takes to match up with Manchester City, so I'm gonna go to Manchester City to win this one, three one, like the reverse score basically. Now, this is interesting, guys. This is very, 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 very interesting. I know I, I probably said that so many times in this video. So, this is a tricky one, guys. This is a tricky one because I've not really been impressed with Milan recently. I haven't been. But they got that big win over PSG. And I think that win over PSG has galvanized them in the Champions League. Because that's a crucial, crucial win. Because had they not won that game, oh, it would have been a, it would have been over, in my opinion. It would have been really, really, really tough for them to progress. They have to be dormant at home. Simply put. If they can't be dormant at home, then I think it's over. Because they have to play away to Newcastle Final Match Day at St. James Park. It's a very difficult one to call. I am really not sure for this one because I'm kind of torn for this one. I don't see Dortmund winning this one. I, like, Let me make this clear. It's either going to be a draw or a Milan win, in my opinion. I just don't see how Dortmund can do this because Dortmund defensively don't look great. You know? Um, and especially this is a way in Italy. I know, Milan, I know Dortmund did do the job over Newcastle. I feel like Milan will pose a different challenge to Newcastle. I don't think Newcastle will make it as easy as it was for Dortmund. So, it's a very difficult one. I'm not really sure what I'm going to go with. Because I'm so uncertain, un, unsure, I'm going to go for a draw. 
I feel like a draw is the sensible prediction here. I could maybe see Malone winning this. I just just don't know, man. I'm not confident. So I'm not confident enough to say Malone's going to win. So because I'm not sure, I'm really skeptical, I'm going to play it safe and just say a draw. And a draw, puts us, it, make, it goes down to the final match day, man. That PSG Newcastle. PSG have to win this one. They need to get revenge for what happened against Newcastle. And do PSG get revenge? I would sure hope so. I would sure hope so that they could get revenge. I mean, you're at home. You're at you're at Paris. Like, everything is set up for you. You know, Newcastle, they just destroyed Chelsea over the weekend 4-1. The problem with Newcastle, though, is that their injuries, man. And I feel like Newcastle, for me, are not really great on the road. You know, they only picked up one draw on the road this time. You know, they picked up a draw against Milan, which they should have lost. And then they lost to Dortmund. So... I'm going to go with PSG to win this one, but it's very, very close. I'm going to go with PSG to narrowly win this one. I have a feeling Kylian Mbappe will show up and get the job done. Let me just say this right now, though. If Mbappe doesn't show up, I don't know PSG win. Just putting this out here. Because I'm only saying PSG win because I expect to see Mbappe perform well. Because Mbappe has been really, really good for PSG and the Champions League at home. He's been terrible on the road. So... I'm going to go with PSG to win, but I'm only on the basis for Mbappe Masterclass. And I'm going to say a 2-1 win for PSG. I think they'll they'll get the job done. The final for Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid have been in insane form. Antoine Griezmann's been on the form of his life. Is there an argument to say that this guy has been the most informed player right now in the world? There is there an argument to be had? Maybe I'll do a members video about who's been the best players in form right now in the world. Because that is definitely a great topic to have. Anyways, we'll discuss that another time. Getting back to this game. Atletico Madrid have looked great. They have been amazing. Their free-flowing attacking football is great. Feyenoord is very solid. This Feyenoord team is no joke. Defensively, while they may be very vulnerable, their attack is lethal. Atletico Madrid as well. And I feel like Atle I feel like Feyenoord were kind of hard done by against Atletico Madrid in the reverse fixture. I feel like Atletico Madrid had some controversial moments. And I feel like Atletico Madrid... I don't think Feyenoord were that bad. It's just that defensively they were just bad. So it's going to be interesting. I'm going to play it safe and say a two-all draw. I feel like this will be a very high-scoring game. And I feel like this will be a very enjoyable game. I definitely uh, I definitely recommend to watch this game. And I might keep my eyes upon this game briefly for that game. Next up, it is Sevilla versus PSV. Huge one, man. Huge one for Sevilla, man. Um, I'll be really honest with you guys. I feel like this is a draw. I feel like this is a draw written all over it. I feel like both teams are going to be pragmatic, conservative. And I don't really see either team being like, okay, you know, going for the win. So we have been awful defensively. I could honestly see PSV win this one. I genuinely could. I don't think Sevilla is going to win. Um, Sevilla defensively looks shambles. PSV, they're kind of in this, I don't know. I, I just feel like for me, I just feel like it's a draw. I just feel like it's a draw. I just don't know why. I just feel like it is. Now, we get to the big one. The big one. Galatasaray versus Manchester United. Wow. So, let's look at the permutations for United. So, United coming into this game with three points on the after four games. Galatasaray, Man United have to win this game. And I believe if Galatasaray win this one, they'll be on seven points. And I think it's over. Yeah, it's over. So if Galatasaray win, Manchester United are officially out of the Champions League. Now, if it's a draw, Manchester United may still have hope in the sense. There can still be a chance that they progress. Because that would put them on four points. Galatasaray there be on five points. And I would expect to see Bayern beat Copenhagen, which we'll get into a bit later. It makes things interesting for United. I think the the truth of the matter is that United are going to have to win both games. They're going to have to likely win both games. Because a draw four points is not... I, I, I don't know, honestly. The thing with United is that this club... See, what's weird about them in the Premier League and Champions League is that we completely, two see, completely see different teams in the, the, the competitions. United and the Champions League have been actually been pretty solid in terms of scoring goals. They, they've been able to score goals. It's just that defensively... These guys have been horrendous, right? Whereas in the Premier League, they have been really solid defensively. It's just they haven't been able to score enough goals. 
So my thing with Manchester United is that I'm not I'm not worried about them scoring goals because I think they can get goals in this game. I just don't know if they're going to I don't know if they're going to keep a clean sheet. That's a bigger problem. Because we saw with Galatasaray. I've seen them against Bayern Munich. Galatasaray knows how to create chances. They're actually really good when it comes to chance creation. It's just that they're so wasteful in the final third. They miss so many chances. Icardi in particular missed so many chances. So it makes this very tricky because I don't know what version United we're going to see. Because I could see a version United that could be very good. I could also see a version United that I don't know. It's a tricky one to call, guys. And I'm going to play a draw. I'm going to say a draw, which keep things in the balance and keep United still alive. But it's not the ideal. It, it makes things very tricky because then they were basically going to have to beat Bayern Munich. And where Galatasaray is in a great position. Five points. Goes down to final match day. Where even a draw, I think, would be enough. Whereas for United, a draw wouldn't be enough because Galatasaray would have the better head-to-head. -head. So it makes things interesting for the final match day. Sets up very nicely. Then next up is Real Sociedad Salzburg. Guys, Real Sociedad should be beating Salzburg. Salzburg has been really, really dis terrible in the Champions League. I don't know what to say with this club. Salzburg has been awful. They have been terrible. I Real Sociedad should be winning this. I'm going to say they win this 2-0. Benfica versus Inter. Now, this is where things get interesting. Believe, believe it or not, guys, I could see Benfica getting a result here. I could see that. And if Benfica gets a result here, it makes this interesting because Inter is going to be in a position where Salzburg would come into the final... Oh, I'm sorry, Sa Sociedad would come into the final match day, assuming that they beat Salzburg at home, which they should, with the with the point gap, right? Two points clear, where Sociedad could top the group with just a, win, just a draw or even a win. Whereas for Inter, they would basically have to win, right? <sighs> Guys... I'm going to go with Inter to narrowly win this one. But somebody tells me this will be a lot closer than people think. Because I feel like for me, Benfica, say what you will, Benfica's actually not been that bad at Portugal. Portugal, they've actually been decent. It's just that they can't score goals. That's the issue. So I'm going to go with Inter to narrowly win. But I think it's going to be very close. I'm going to say like a 1-0 win for Inter on the road. Then we have Braga versus Union Berlin. Union Berlin, man, they have been really, really under... They haven't been great in the Bundesliga this season. They've been... Um, man bad they have sacked their coach that i think fisher has been sacked and they put a point a new coach and things have seemingly got better they got picked up two draws the last two games so maybe things can get better for union berlin that being said though they have to win against braga because braga have the better head-to-head -head right now and if union berlin don't win braga will have a better head-to-head -head. so for me for this one guys i'm gonna go with the draw for this one i think this will be a, a draw and that doesn't really do Union berlin for favors because new braga would still be on um What's it called? Four points, I think. Yeah, four points. Whereas Union Berlin will only be on two points, so they need to win. Next up is Real Madrid versus Napoli. Real Madrid have been looking amazing. Rodrigo has been amazing. Jude Bellingham has been incredible. People are calling him belly goal now. <laughs> um, so for Real Madrid, I just think that they're going to get the job done against Napoli. Napoli have been kind of been underwhelming this season. They haven't been the same as last season. Maybe this is Napoli last season. They could do something. Nah, not this version. So I'm going to go with Real Madrid to win this one. I'm going to say... Like a, 3-1 win for Real Madrid. I think they'll really comfortably get the job done, especially them being at home. Although, I think Osimhen is back, though. I think Osimhen is back, so that's a huge bonus for Napoli there. Next up is Arsenal versus Lons. Arsenal, man. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about something about Manchester. I forgot to talk about Minor. That Minor guy is a brilliant, brilliant, really brilliant player. I want to mention it because that guy had a man-of-the-match performance against Everton. And also, a look out for um, Garnacho. That was a sick goal from Garnacho. Anyways, I'm going... I should have said that earlier. Just remember now all of a sudden. Anyways, going back to Arsenal versus Lons. Arsenal, I think if they win this game, I think they have officially qualified. So, Arsenal, they should be, beat Lons. I know Lons won the reverse fixture. Arsenal is a different beast, though, with Emirates. At the Emirates, Arsenal has generally been pretty good. And I feel like Arsenal will get the job done. And, um, you know, Kai Havertz, man, scored the winner against Brentford. So, I'm going to go with Arsenal to win this one. I'm going to say they win this one, too, now. I'm fairly confident. All right, and next up it is Bayern Munich versus Copenhagen. Bayern Munich should be winning this one. I, even though Bayern have already topped the group and they have really nothing to play for, I still feel like it's Bayern Munich in the day. And it's at home. They're going to take this seriously. And I think Bayern will still win this one. I think this will be a lot closer than people think. I don't think this will be a walk in the park. But I'm going to say like a 3-1. I have a feeling what's going to happen is Copenhagen will score first. 
and the Bayern will likely bring off their bring on their big players and make a comeback, and that will definitely hurt Copenhagen. So Copenhagen needs to try to get at least a draw in this game to make things interesting. But yeah, anyways, those are my Champions League match day five predictions. Let me know your match day five predictions in the comments below. Anyways, we're going to quickly run through the Europa League and Conference League real quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I know many of you guys don't really have that much interest in this, which is understandable, but I'm still going to speed through this since at the end of the day, you know, these competitions are still important. So we have my Kaiba Haifa versus Rennes. A very, very interesting one, guys. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. I think Mike Hebe Haifa can do something at home. I don't really trust run, runs in the road. Rins. Um, the Sturm Graz versus Rocco. I'm going to go Sturm Graz to win this 1-1-0. A very, very close game. I think it's going to be another close one. Atalanta versus Sporting. It's a very interesting one. Sporting need to win this one if they want to top this group. And Atalanta, as long as they don't lose, they're going to get. They're going to have the better head-to-head. -head. So... I'm going to say this one ends in a draw, which actually favors Atalanta more than Sporting. So, I think it's going to be a draw for that one. Next up, it is Sparta Pro versus Real Batiste. Real Batiste should get the job, the job done. I'm going to say it's going to make another 1-0 win for Real Batiste. I think it'll be a very scrappy, scrappy win. Then we have AK Athens versus Brighton. Can Brighton get revenge over AK Athens? Um, Brighton have been looking pretty good. And Athens have kind of regressed ever since they got that huge win over Brighton on the match day. Match day one. So... I'm going to say Brighton do get revenge, and it's going to be close. I'm going to go with the 1-0 win for Brighton. I think it'll be a very close one. Then TSC Baka versus Topolov versus West Ham. I'm going to go with West Ham to win this one. I'm going to say this win this one 2-0 against TSC Baka Topolov. Oh, I forgot to play my booster. Let me play my booster real quick. I'm very sorry, guys. I'm going off. I, I know I've been going off. I'm going to go with Man City versus RB Leipzig in my booster. All right, next up it is Freiburg versus Olympiacos. Guys, I'm going to go with a... Um, I could see a draw. I could see a draw for this one. You know what? I'm going to say a draw, which actually favors Freiburg more since they have the better head side. Hawken versus Leverkusen, guys. L Leverkusen should be winning. I'm going to go with the 3-1 scoreline. I think they're going to do a 3-1. Mold versus quarterback. I'm going to go with a 1-0 win for Mold. Just feels like they're going to get the job done. Sheriff versus Slavia Praha. I'm going to go Slavia Praha to win this one 2-0 on the road. Spra Servet versus Roma. I'm going to go with Servet. Roma to win 2 0. Villarreal versus Pinite the Kynos. Um, I'm going to go with Villarreal to get revenge. Although I don't think they're going to score enough, though. I think it's going to be a 1 0 win. I think it's going to be a very tight 1 0 win. Then to lose versus Union SG. A uh, very tricky one. I'm going to have to go with the French team, though, on this one. I think they've been better, and especially at home. And they got that huge win over Liverpool, so that's massive. So I think they will do it. And the Liverpool versus LESK. I'm going to go with Liverpool to win 3 0. Uh, Rangers versus Aris Limazol. I'm going to go Rangers to win 2-1. Uh, Marseille versus Ajax. This is a one that I put in the thumbnail. Um, for this one, it's a very tricky one because Marseille have not been great in the league. They haven't been bad, great in the league. They've been so bad. Whereas in the Europa League, they've actually been pretty amazing. Ajax, on the other hand, have had a bad start to the season and now pick things up. You know, they're picking some good form up. So, I think this could be a draw. You know what? I'm going to say Marseille narrowly wins, but something tells me this could be a draw. But I'm going to go with Marseille to win this one just on the fact that they're at home. And I'm going to play my boost draw on Leverkusen. I'm fairly confident Leverkusen. Leverkusen is one of the best teams in the world right now. All right, Conference League time. Astana versus Dinamo Zayaga. I'm going to go Dinamo Zayaga to win 2-0. AJK versus Aberdeen. I'm going to say another 1-1 draw for this one. AZ Alkmaar versus Zerniske. I'm going to go with uh, AZ Alkmaar to get revenge 2-0. Uh, but Sheik just was a club Bruge. I'm going to say another draw for this one. 1-1. One, one. Bodo Glenn versus Lugano. I think Bodo Glenn will win 1-0. Balkani versus Victoria Pleasant. I'm going to go with Victoria Pleasant to get the 2-1 win here. Ghent versus Zora Lenisk. I'm going to go with is a win for Ghent. I think Ghent will win this at home. K Klasvik versus Lovian Batisavle. I'm going to say 1-1 one, one draw for this one. Olympia Lubana versus Lille. I'm going to say another uh, I'm going to say Lille win that one 2-0. Uh, then Spartak Trinava versus Luda Goretz. Um, I'm going to say Luda Goretz just about get the win on the road. North Lem versus Ferenbache. I think Ferenbache will just about squeeze through the win here. Frank versus Polak. I'm going to go with Frankfurt to win this one 2 0. Get revenge. Kukrachi versus Ferenc Varos. I think Ferenc Varos should win. And I think I'll play my booster for that one. Um, and then Fiorentina versus Gank. I'm going to go Fiorentina just to narrowly win that one 2 1. Although I could maybe see Gank get a draw. Aston Villa versus Legia Warsaw. I'm going to go with Aston Villa to win that one. 3-1. I should play my booster for this one, actually. Bristol Bank versus Maccabi Tel Aviv. 
And I'm going to go with my Kiba Tel Aviv to narrowly win this one 2-1 one on the road. So there will be links in the description below to the prediction leagues if you guys are interested. So anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this prediction video. Remember guys to let me know your predictions in the comments below. Go around guys to like and subscribe. Comment below your thoughts in the comments below. Also check out me with the puffs in the description below. Access, me access members, videos, members, streams. And also access to my other platforms. And yeah, comment below your thoughts. Turn on vacation bell to be notified. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.